Coming on to Fairlawn's historic trolley ride. This is a promotional event that's part of our 100 year anniversary celebration. Now we have some special guests on this ride, including, including the Honorable Mayor of our town. Yeah. I'd like to thank you for uh, taking some time out of your schedule to come on this ride with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for doing this. Now, the, Wayne, you're the man behind the camera, so I know that the people can't see you, but they can feel you. <laughs> and we can feel all the hard work that you've put into documenting the various events that we've done throughout this year to celebrate the town that we love. Thank you. And I'd like to thank uh, the co-chair of the uh, Historic Subcommittee for the Fairlawn 100 Anniversary Committee, and that's Maria. Maria! Maria's done a wonderful job not only assisting in this event, but running a wildly successful event at the Fairlawn Public Library that was called Fairlawn Then and Now, which was a photo project of different sites in town that showed an old image of the site, a similar angled new image, and then merged them together to create uh, a beautiful mosaic of past meets present. So thank you for that. I'm going to give you a general idea of what this route is going to look like. We're going to make our way out of Memorial and then we're going to go down River Road. And we're going to start maybe appropriately with the oldest property in town, which is the Garrison Forge and Farm. Now we'll talk a little bit more about it once we get closer to it, but that's where we're going to start the tour. And then we're going to work our way back up through Morlot to get to the high school. And we'll of course be talking about some of the history of the high school and the additions and the expansion of that building. We'll then make our way down Fairlawn Ave. Ooh, go through Radburn a little bit. <laughs> Hold on now. Come back to Fairlawn Ave. I almost dropped my camera. <laughs> I in there, Matt. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm nimble on my feet. Yes, you are. We'll make our way back down Fairlawn Ave towards the municipal building, the library, and touch around First and Sixth Streets, which have some uh, history uh, to them as well, before making our way back to Memorial. Thank you. Round of applause. Time for a commercial. Are you hung over too much at night? <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, just so you know, you have had a great intro from that. I'm going to try to do my best to shoot out this window right here. We're going to pass kind of quickly, but it'll give you some idea of where we're going as we travel around the town. Thank you. Stay with me. Now that we're going down River Road, it's a good time to start talking about what our first stop will be, and that's uh, Garrison Forge and Farm. So as we mentioned, uh, kind of in the prologue to this tour, it is the oldest uh, continual uh, property in not only Fairlawn, but Bergen County at large. Uh, it's estimated to have been built around 1719, which well predates the formation of our country. Eventually, we will see it eventually on our right. Uh, many of you have probably seen it before. Uh, the neat thing about Garrison Forge and Farm, in my opinion, is not only is it still preserved as a museum, but it's very much a museum that isn't stale, that isn't musty and dusty. It is an active, thriving museum that has a legion of volunteers that put on various events throughout the years, uh, excuse me, throughout the year, whether that's a butterfly release festival, showing techniques about how to garden or grow herbs, teaching tour guides what uh, kitchen wares might have been used to cook meals in the 17 and 1800s or what farming practices might have been employed, to doing uh, Sinterklaas uh, celebration events, uh, explaining to uh, visitors uh, how Dutch Christmas might have been celebrated. Coming up? It's going to be coming up. Uh, you can see the wooden fences uh, that are leading to it. And it has a beautiful and uh, well-maintained uh, garden in its back uh, that's maintained by the Bergen County Master Gardeners Association. And they actually sell many of their seeds and uh, uh, plants and, and produce. Uh, Peter, Peter Garretson uh, immigrated to the United States or his family uh, from the Netherlands. Uh, and this is very 
uh, symptomatic of the composition of uh, settlement in this area. Dutch colonial style uh, farmhouse surrounded by acres and acres and acres of land that a family would work to maintain and then pass down through the generation uh, for families to continue to maintain it. Uh, you'll, you'll probably be familiar with other homesteads in town that perhaps came in later centuries, such as Hopper, Berdan, Croucher, LaGrosa. The Garretson farmstead is essentially the forerunner to all of those farmsteads that came in the 18 and 1900s. How many acres did it have? Easily over 200, but I don't know the exact amount. But uh, very expansive. And the river was behind that? It, it, yes, that is correct. And I got a private tour. Nobody else went away. And we went upstairs. This is going into the tunnel. We're going to dig it up in another hundred years. I want everybody to be there, too. We will be. We know. Continue with the trip. Stay with me. All right, everybody, as we continue the tour. We're coming up onto the complex that is not only uh, the Farallon High School, but of course we can see on our right, Sasso Field. Now, as we know, Sasso Field is home to the Farallon Cutters. Many of you may have read uh, the history of the name Cutters, but it's always a fun one to hear. Uh, Dick Engelhart, who is the voice of the Cutters, uh, has told this story many times. On September 13th of 1943, 1943 being when the high school opened up, Fairlawn had its first football game. Its seniors decided to cut class. They were punished by both the school and the athletic department where the coach held them out of the first half. Fairlawn, missing key players on its football team, was losing at halftime. A groundswell of support for these miscreants came from the bleachers as the crowd started to chant, put in those cutters, put in those cutters. <laughs> Now, not only did they come in, they led the team to victory, Oi. I believe against Ridgewood, and the name stuck. Uh, previous to that, the team name was contemplated to be the Comets. That's correct. Uh, Sasso Field is named after an administrator, teacher, athletic director, and coach who served in the Farallon school system for over 30 years, Virgil Sasso. Great guy, I knew well, actually. Is that true? Yes, definitely, yes. Excellent. So, for those of you who have not been to Fairland High School in uh, the past uh, decade or so, you will notice that uh, the C-Wing has been expanded uh, with an addition. Uh, as we talked about, the A-Wing, the original portion of the building, which we will pass around, uh, was built and opened in 1943. The B-Wing was the first addition in uh, 1957. The C-Wing was in the 60s, and then, of course, the beautiful addition that we see was 2007. Fairland High School is uh, unique to me in the sense that uh, it has an amenity that not many other public schools have. That is in the A-Wing itself, it has a planetarium. Uh, for those of you who have children who might not have gone to it, uh, it is something worthwhile to go to. Uh, and with the addition to the C-Wing, they also built a beautiful atrium uh, within this uh, new brick wall. When we come down the street here, we're going to exit uh, to what was the original facade, the original front, the original uh, A-Wing. And you can close your, you can look out the window and imagine uh, the rest of the building perhaps not being there and what it might have been like for students in the 1940s uh, to go to school here. Here is the A-Wing. A skateboarder that we hired because that was very popular in the 1920s. Yay! <laughs> All right, so we're going to uh, go down Berdan and make our way to Fairlawn Ave, where the tour will continue. So we have a couple moments here. Just wanted to mention uh, Berdan being named after uh, the Berdan family, who was one of the prominent farming families in Fairlawn before Fairlawn transitioned uh, to a suburban community. Uh, which happened in the late 30s and uh, early 40s. On forward. You're on. 
All right, so we're approaching Farallon Ave, and as we make our right onto it, I want you to try and imagine what Farallon Ave would have looked like to somebody who was traversing it in the 1920s, or the 1930s as well. Imagine it as a single lane road, lined with tall and lush elm trees, as far as you can see on each side. Of course, all these side streets are also unlikely to be here as well. They might be dirt roads if they're present, and they're going to likely lead to farms. Uh, whether that's the LaGrosa farm, the Hopper Croucher farm. Um, this certainly was the main vein and thoroughfare for the town, but certainly kept a very small rural town feel back then. What's the next What, did he go somewhere else? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to... So we're going to be taking this trolley down, down Fairlawn Ave to Radburn Road, and we're going to make a left on Radburn Road, and then a left on Howard. Now, for all the riders, whether you're from Fairlawn or not, one of the most prominent facts about this town is the Radburn Development Community. Uh, people study it in textbooks. Uh, the reason is that in the 1920s, as cars became more prominent in the life of uh, citizens and residents of this country, more and more cars began to clutter the road. There became a concern about pedestrian traffic, particularly children uh, walking to school, walking to their houses of faith, or walking to uh, you know uh, play and hang out with other uh, neighborhood children. So, Radburn is created in a way to help minimize the interaction between the pedestrian and the car traffic. So, for those of you who live in Radburn, you're probably well aware of exactly how that community was developed. But for those of you that don't, it is modeled after English garden-style communities where the houses, instead of the front entrances facing the street, the front entrances are flipped and face the backyard. But the backyard is walking paths in public parks. So this should, the idea is that the amenities that the children or the residents of the area might want to frequent are simply in their backyard as opposed to having to cross uh, streets that might be busy with this new concept of an automobile. Yep. Now interestingly, Radburn was supposed to be more expansive than it wound up being. And that's a surprise I think for many of us because it is already pretty expansive when you go in there. You could spend a whole day there navigating the streets. Well, what happened is Radburn was first established in 1928. Now, what do you think might have happened a year later that might have dried up the investment pool to continue the development of Radburn? The 1929 stock market crash. So the development of Radburn halted right around 20th Street. That leads back to the uh, Farallon High School. So, as mentioned, Radburn is studied uh, in land uh, land use and uh, urban planning uh, textbooks and classes, including in other countries, uh, because of its forward thinking in trying to develop a safe community that still retained uh, some of its verdant uh, farm garden roots while incorporating the motor age into it. Uh, it was one of the first communities to have that goal. The bump that we're going over at uh, at the moment in the trolley is now. I'm just going to turn the music off so you can hear me. This is uh, colloquially known as the Radburn bump. Yes. It's very popular for uh, those newly. Uh, securing their driver's permits or licenses to test how fast they can go over the bump for a little bit of a thrill before or after the school day starts or ends. All right, we're going to be making a left uh, on the Plaza Road. Now, we're not going to see the Dutch House. We did see it as we were going down Fairlawn Ave, but as we're highlighting it, those of you who know, it's 
to the left, not too far away from where our position is. The Dutch house, well beloved in town uh, for its uh, food and drinks and uh, convivial atmosphere that it provides to our citizens. But what's interesting about the Dutch house is it's also a very old property. Not as old as Garrison Forge and Farm, but it's close. It's estimated that the single family farmhouse that originally stood at the Dutch house was from 1740 to 1760. Now, now, for its current usage as a restaurant and tavern, that actually also goes back uh, to around the founding of the town, the town being founded in 1924. Well, the Dutch house was being used as an eating and drinking establishment since 1929. So it has been serving the people of this town in various iterations over the decades since essentially the inception of and now we're looking at the Ramsville Plaza building, which is what I've had on tape all this time. Now, this clearly uh, is our most iconic building. Paris has the Eiffel Tower, New York City has the Empire State <laughs> Building, and we here in Fairlawn have the Radburn Plaza building with its beautiful facade and sloping, bell-shaped clock tower. I think the importance of the building to various generations in the town has never really waned. Right here. Yep. <laughs> and we know that because it has caught fire and been severely damaged on at least three occasions. In our lifetime, October of 2002, and then in a very brief period of time in 1941, and then again in January of 1944. But each time the town came together to demand that it be rebuilt, and that it be rebuilt very similar to the style that it originally was Matt, can I make a suggestion? Can we introduce our guests before we close? Oh, oh yes, please do. Yep. Where are you? I, no, I, I was going to do at the end, but... We're we at the have, end. We okay. have history on the bus. This is Mr. Charlie Wolf. Louder. He turned 100 years old this year. Yeah. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Mr. Wolf. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. He's our special guest. All right, Matt, back to you. Where, where are we now, Matt? Thank you. Well, I just want to thank Charlie for coming on. Obviously, thank you for your service. And I wanted to know, was the Radburn bump there when you, when you were a kid? Was the Radburn bump there? I've done meals on wheels in Fairlawn. Yes. And I've gone through a whole lot of town. I know every bump in town. Yeah. Here, Charlie's done meals on wheels and down and he said he knows every bump in town. <laughs> and his daughter's been on the Radford bump. <laughs> As a driver and passenger. It's a family thing. <laughs> so we are now uh, at uh, both Radford Chain Station, which is behind us, and the Cadmus House. Cadmus House is Farallon's official uh, museum. Uh, it is maintained by a board of trustees. The interesting thing is, while the Cadmus House always was around the Fairlawn Ave area, it was not originally here. It was actually a few buildings down on Fairlawn Ave where you might see a large gray office building with red trim. What had happened is in the 1980s, the Cadmus House, which was built around 1815, was going to be demolished. Uh, concerned citizens banded together, led by a gentleman who is currently the president of the Cadmus House, Rich Ball, to uh, save the home and have it move to its present location next to the train station, which in itself is also historic, to, as alluded to, serve as our town museum. The train station is uh, interesting in the sense that it's not where Fairlawn gets its name, but it is where the name Fairlawn perhaps was most promoted to catch on. So, where the senior center is currently located, and we'll be passing that on this tour, there was a grand estate there in the mid-18 and late 1800s called the Acker Estate. David Acker was, and his family came from the Netherlands, which we know in the New York City and Bergen County area, Dutch settlers were very common uh, early settlers to come to this area. And his estate had a sloping lawn that went from the senior center to Fairlawn Ave that he certainly was very proud of. So the train station that predated the current Bradburn train station had a sign 
or a banner that was draped in front of it that proclaimed Fair Lawn. Uh, he was marketing, advertising, announcing what he was proud of with his estate. And he would pick up uh, visitors and uh, guests uh, via horse and carriage to bring them to be entertained at his estate. Well, the name caught on. Originally, that uh, area, that town, that community, in the time of David Acker, was called Sluderdam. But eventually it does take the name Farallon um, because of the uh, promotion and the estate that David Acker had. On our right is the Opportunity Center. This was originally a farmstead built in the early 1800s uh, named the Peter A. Demers House. In 1915, it was sold to the Lagrosas, who operated a vegetable, fruit, and daffodil farm. The Lagrosas are notable early farmers in Fairlawn, like the Hoppers, Crouchers, Berdans. But they are notable because, unlike them, they are the first prominent farmers in town who are not of German, Dutch, or Anglo-Saxon descent. They are Italian. Now, I think that uh, many of you probably harbor similar feelings of pride of our public library. It's pretty well known, uh, I think, in our uh, general geographic area. Um, and also a little fun story for you. Uh, my wife and I and my parents went to Paris. We were sitting at a table uh, in the morning at a crepe, a crepe uh, restaurant. Two individuals came to sit at the table with us. It was community seating. Uh, we were talking with them about where they came from. Uh, they were from California. They asked us where we were from. We said Fairlawn. And immediately uh, the gentleman exclaimed, the library with the globe. Oh, wow. <laughs> So, uh, Fairlawn, uh, wow. obviously a small world moment, but it certainly was something that impressed upon his mind about the way that that library is set up, what it offers. Um, it is a excellent resource for our community. Um, looking out, the senior center should be coming up here. Oh, here we go. Okay, so, uh, yes? When was that one built? Because I remember going to a library down in the post office. Yes. Yes, so the, uh, I'm not exactly sure when that was erected, but you are correct. The original library was on River Road. It was first in the, um, the building that had the Chase Bank that just went out of business, and then it was in the old library theater. Hence its name. Old library. Uh, okay, so the Senior Center, uh, that just to get an idea, that's where the Acker Estate was. And it's fair lawn stretched from the senior center parking lot straight down to Fairlawn Avenue. Uh, on on Vos, we're going to pause. Yep. Antidote. So uh, we're going to be pa passing the Washington School. We'll point it out once we get towards it. It served as an elementary school in the earlier part of Fairlawn. Now, we're all familiar with many of the elementary schools in town. Lincrest, Warren Point, Milnes, Radburn, Westmoreland, Forest. Warren Point is interesting. Uh, in the late 1800s, excuse me, in the early 1800s, uh, former president and former uh, general and hero of the Civil War, Ulysses S. Grant, actually did come to Fairlawn. Uh, he was feted and served a dinner and celebrated in the Warren Point area uh, by his uh, residents of what then was Sluderdam, but Fairlawn. So uh, probably one of the more, if not the most prominent uh, American celebrity and historical figure that has uh, come through these streets. Oh, right, here it is. So this is uh, the Washington School. It's now office buildings uh, for the Department of Transportation and Navy Rec. Board of Ed. Thank you. Uh, it is a, a gothic, a revival gothic uh, architectural style. And you'll see uh, some of the features uh, adorning the uh, uh, chapel-like uh, pitch, uh, pitch roof are just those little, little elements of architecture that we don't often see in modern architecture that add a bit of character to buildings. So it's uh, wonderful that that not only still exists, but should exist for some time as the town continues to make use of it. I I do not know, but I certainly know that Forrest was the principal there. 
Yeah. But so do you know? So do you know? Do you know? Do I know when? No. Was a rhetorical question. I don't live in she said 1974. Matt, you're on still. Was it when he retired or when he died? I believe retired. I believe he was still alive. And that school was named after Theodore Roosevelt, not FDR. Oh. Just in case you're curious. So we are in uh, heading back to Memorial uh, uh, School and Memorial Pool where the ride will end. But we're in the 1st Street through 6th Street part of Fairlawn. The significance of this part um, of Fairlawn is it, uh, many of the homes here were some of the first working class community homes in this town. Uh, and there was a, a large factory uh, around 1st and 2nd Street that uh, was an aluminum and bronze factory uh, that many of the working class uh, citizens of town uh, would actually seek their employment at. Close me. All right, everybody, I sincerely hope that not only did you enjoy the tour that we put together for you today, but maybe you learned something new about the history and development of our town over the past 100 years. I want to thank everybody for taking the time out of your day to come on. A big hand for Matt. A big hand for our butt trolley driver. Yeah, yeah. And our senior citizen, a big hand over here. And Madam Mayor, some closing thank, words. Thank you. Oh, this was an amazing tour. Thank you, Matt. We had a wonderful time. Yeah, that we all amazing. learned a lot. And it made me want to learn even more about Fairlong's history because it really is fascinating. Okay, everybody, back yeah. to the 100th anniversary show. Yeah.